Itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Hilsinger of Germany was 25th. She was 30th after the first run. She was part of a strong German contingent that I thought skied really well in the first run and I am excited to see things out of in the future. Welcome back to the Race Recap. I am Joe and this is the number one most streamed ski racing show in the upper Midwest. I just got finished watching the first lady slalom from Levy. It was a fantastic race. The snow conditions were perfect. The weather looked perfect. Petra Vahova was the winner. Uh, she even mentioned in the interview at the end of the day that the weather and the, the temperature and the snow was perfect and that really made her happy and she did great out there. Before we can get to that, however, we need to talk about today's new sponsor, Devin. Devin was my high school neighbor growing up. Uh, he saw the show, wanted to be part of it, so I sold him some marketing rights to the mug. He bought himself three letters, Dev. We used to call him Dev anyway. Um, Devin's awesome. He was homeschooled, so first person to donate to the show was homeschooled, so whatever that means. I wonder how many of these athletes in this race were homeschooled. I mean, some of these are, girls have been pro since they were 17, so did they really go to high school or were they homeschooled too? So here's to Devin. If you want to get some merchandise or get some property rights anywhere around this action, you just get to me at joethedad33 at gmail.com and we'll talk about some money exchange. Let's go through the entire second run, starting with Hilsinger from Germany. She was the 30th person to qualify for the second run. 30th place qualified last for the second run. She ended up 25th. Um, the German squad looked really good out there today. They were deeper than I've ever seen before. Uh, Hilsinger made it to the second run, but there were a number of girls that were right behind her, also from Germany. They were really, really close to making the second run. So look out for this German team coming up. It looks like they're skiing really strong. Safenberg of Sweden, bib 56, was next to go. She ended up 23rd, really good result for her. Bib 69 out of Finland, an 18 year old in her second ever World Cup. Pojolainen ended up 24th, great day for her. Erin Milzinski out of Canada, uh, she had better skiing in her second run than she did in the first run. She is an extremely dynamic skier. She gets really good high edge angles. She gets her hip really low to the snow. She's really um, pleasing to watch the way her skiing is. Powerful, it's smooth. Um, it was a little too below the gate down the big pitch. She was getting her pressure a little under the gate and still a little, little slidey down there. So she needs to clean that up if she wants to move up the ranks and compete a little stronger. Lena Popovich had a really good day out there. She has really long legs and can make good speed pretty much everywhere through the course. She was in the leader chair for seven athletes straight. Uh, pretty cool for her. She ended up in, I don't know what she ended up. What place did she end up? Lena Popovich ended up 18th. Nastia Noans was next. She ended up 26th, not her best day. K Katrina Gallhuber, 27th, not her best day. Uh, Shari Mar Meyer of Austria, she has switched to Dalbello and Vocal, she ended up 19th. Um, she's a weird one on the circuit. She was starting in the top seven for a really long time. I never really got how she was holding it together. Her best ever result is a sixth, and as far as I can see it, she's really just a top 15 skier. So 19th for her, not her best day, but I'm not really sure if she has the top end speed. Uh, Perdolini of Italy wore bib 86 in the second run because it would appear that she lost her bib in between runs. How about that? You're in a World Cup and you lose your bib in between runs and you got to go run with some Jerry bib 86 on. Then came uh, Kristen Lisdahl of Norway. She went out to her hip entering the pitch. Then came Tveiberg of Norway and she did the same thing. So two Norway girls in a row went down on their hip rolling over onto the pitch. And uh, a bummer of a day for them. The Norwegians did not look great out there to me. Except for a little bit later. There's one that did pretty good but we'll get to that. Um, but the Norwegians don't look super strong, super confident in their slalom right now. I don't know if their prep is missing. Um, and a lot of it just doesn't look like they have the strength to really stand on the outside ski hard enough and make some moves. Except for the one we're going to talk about later. 
After losing two girls going over the breakover, there was a large discussion on the broadcast about what was going on there and what adjustments the athletes needed to make to make it down the next pitch. I wanted to go over now some thoughts I had on this situation, and so we're going to move to the new whiteboard. It's time for a base scheme breakdown. Brought to you by Dev. Maybe we'll call it the homeschooling whiteboard. Ooh, that sounds good. All right. <clears throat> So there's a lot of talk about rolling the edges up clean and rolling up the rolling the skis up early in the turn. Uh, when you're doing this, I call this a simple roll up. You come onto the edges, you roll the ski up clean. It's a clean arc where the tail of the ski follows the tip of the ski all the way through the track. Then we move over the roll and all the athletes move into a stivet. Now there's a lot of different meanings to the word stivet and there's a lot of different variations of the word stivet. However, I think the simplest word still is stivet because it's a combination of sliding and pivot. Sliding the ski and pivoting it. Slide and pivot. It can be a schmear, it can be a butter, it can be a feather, it can be a windshield wiper stiv, it can be a big stivet, it can be a power slide. It can be a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, stivet, sliding and pivot is the best explanation for what's going on on the pitch. There are no girls in this World Cup, or men for, for that matter, that are rolling it up on that pitch at Levy. Now, up top on the flats, everybody's rolling it up. All the girls are carving the ski so that the tail is following the tip through the track it's making. When you're rolling it up on that top flat, you're not taking a risk. You're just skiing hard. Rolling it up when it's flat and easy is just that, flat and easy. And so in this top section where everybody was pumping a little bit, but rolling up all the turns, there's no risk being taken. This is just good hard slalom skiing. Now, as they broke over onto the pitch, now they needed to make some tactical adjustments, make some adjustments in their skiing. And they moved from a rolling it up type turn to a stivet turn down the pitch. Now, where you make this transition, how many gates up, how many gates over the knuckle is kind of up to you as a racer, but everybody is running a stivet down on the pitch to one degree or another. Now, where risk comes in skiing is in this stivet zone is how big or little of a stivet do you use to be able to go fast and move down the hill? That is risk. You are not taking risk on the top where you're rolling it up. Risk would be trying to roll it up on the pitch. And I'm just going to tell you right now, if you come in and roll it up on one of those gates on the pitch, you're going to power slide and you're going to turn to the bottom of the turn and you're going to be slow. So risk is how big or small are you feathering the skis in this stivet? Okay. I hope the diagram makes sense here. This is a rolled up line, one track through the snow, the tail is following the tip through the track it's making. Here the tail of the ski is feathering out as the tip of the ski still runs this arc and direction. And if you look at the marker like a ski, it is lifting and the tail is sliding, sliding, sliding until somewhere. Hopefully around the fall line, the skier engages the edges, makes clean snow contact, and carves and rides out the bottom. So in the future when we talk about rolling it up, stiv it, what kind of risk we're talking about, this is what we're talking about. And that's this week's Base Skiing Breakdown. Today's Base Skiing Breakdown is brought to you by Outside Ski Pressure. Get yours today. Do you want outside ski pressure like this? Because I can give it to you. I just put it in this rock and mail it to you. Don't worry, I'm legit. The reason these rocks work is because someone cared deeply about them. I use the ancient Blackhawk tradition of self-actualizing the outside ski pressure into the rock. Is it in? Yeah, I think it is. Just pull it out of the package and it's yours. Outside ski pressure rocks are $600. Each are made special order. Please contact JoeTheDad33 at gmail.com for ordering instructions. Brett, you can get outside ski pressure from a rock?
Are you kidding me? That's amazing. All right. Moving forward in the race, Acher from Germany. This is a young girl, her second ever World Cup. When she came through the finish line, she was .44 ahead. She ended up 14th on the day. Acher from Germany, one to watch moving forward. Whole German team, I'm telling you, is looking good. Paula Moulton had some good speed in the second run. However, she hooked a tip going over the breakover. Uh, probably was a bit something over in this regard as far as a tactical error that she made. Uh, maybe was charging a little too hard. That's usually what happens when you try and cut it too tight into a gate, then you hook the tip. No, no, bummer for her. I was looking forward to a good day from her, but still, good skiing. She looked good. She looked solid. She belongs out there every day. Katrina Huber from Austria. She, she came through the line uh, in first place. Really nice, smooth skiing out there. She ended up 12th. Katrina Truppe of Austria was next. I really like Katrina Truppe. She is a very small athlete in certain terms of height and frame, but she really just floats down the hill and has a really pretty style. Um, she today was running a little bit of a quick edge set right at the gate. And it's interesting, if you're watching on Peacock, go back, watch Katrina Truppe's run Watch where her edge pressure is, especially on the pitch, where her edge pressure is at the gate, how it's a quick pressure at the gate, and then she makes her gets her and then she gets her direction changing to the other way, quick hit, boom, go in the other direction. Um, then after Trupe, there's a break and they go and show Michaela's run from the first run and they slow-mo Michaela coming down the pitch. And then from what you see with Michaela is she's a little bit above the gate with that same quick edge pressure, but it's a little above the gate and it's a little smoother and brings her a little further back across the hill, but it's that same quickness of edge pressure, but Michaela's is in the right spot. Where Troopy's right at the gate, Michaela's a little bit above and outside of the rise line where she's getting that ski going and making that move. So it's a really cool thing. Go back and watch it on Peacock. Troopy's run, watch where her edge set and pressure is on the pitch and then watch Michaela in slow-mo right after that and you really get a sense of like what you want to be doing and what unfortunately a lot of athletes do end up doing which is Troupe. Um, I really hope Troupe gets it together. She is a fun one to watch and it seems like she's been struggling a little bit um, but it's a new season. Good things will come. Anna Bucic, uh, Slovenia. She had a really good day out there. She ended up 11th today. Um, she is running what I call the Austrian slalom technique, which is where you get your hips facing towards the next gate in the course when you're hitting the gate you're at versus what would be a more traditional style where the hips are turned a little more square facing down the fall line when you're hitting the gate instead of facing that gate you're going to. So Austrian slalom technique, hips are facing towards the gate that they're headed to when they're at the gate they're at. More traditional technique is the hips are facing down the fall line when they're at the gate they're at, and then the skis turn and cross under the hips on the way to the next gate. Uh, so Butchus is running the Austrian slalom technique, ended up 11th today. I think for some of the long-legged athletes, it's a good technique and it works well. Ali Nullenmeyer of Canada, she's 23 years old. She is into third. She came down at the third. She's super solid out there. She looks really strong on her feet. She's maybe holding onto the edges too long. She's running too long of an arc or too long of a pressure when she's skiing. Um, she needs to shorten that up and she'll be a lot faster. But she's so solid and confident on the snow conditions that they have. Um, she's absolutely a World Cup athlete and I like watching her out there. It's cool. Um, Lauren St. Germain, another Canadian. She is running on her left foot, a traditional technique, and then she gets to the right foot and she's running the Austrian slalom technique. And I don't think that's by design. Uh, I think what's happening maybe is she's getting so much speed off of the left foot, she gets to the right foot and isn't willing to move her hip into the turn. So she's kind of doing the Austrian technique and just pivoting around and facing the hips towards the next gate. I'm sure she, I'm sure she wants to work on it. Uh, Dvornik of Slovenia, she ended up 16th. Dubrovska of Czech, she ended up 13th. Dubrovska could be a top seven skier any minute now. She's very good. The Norwegian that we were talking about earlier was Stendersund. 
She came down at the first place. When she came down, she got 10th place overall. She fell over with joy in the finish line. I think that the pressure uh, on the Norwegian team is real. I think they knew that they were kind of out there not having a good day. And so for Shenderson to come down into first place, kind of carry the team on her shoulders is really good to see. And, and now you can't count uh, you can't count Norway out of it because Norway's really good at everything. Sarah Hector's next. She came down at the first place. She had some top end speed out there, but too many mistakes on the pitch. She wasn't clean enough on the pitch. She was a little below the gate down the pitch. As usual, she was elated in the finish. She did come down in first place. Love Sarah Hector out there. I can't wait till she gets it totally figured out again. Brad, what do you think of a vacation levy? You go there and you get four hours of sunlight. A lot of nap time. I figure if you want to go somewhere and just sleep, you go to Levy, you sleep in Wicked Lake, eat a second breakfast, then you go out and ski for four hours, ski your face off in really cold conditions. Then you come inside, snack, hot tub, it's dark out. You take your first nap, wake up, eat dinner, huge dinner, stay up late watching movies, go to bed again, wake up late, second breakfast. It's the dream. Back to live action. Wendy Holdner. Uh, is back. She looked so good out there. She came down 0.42 ahead. Uh, she apparently hurt both of her wrists in a, a fitness apparatus accident. She fell off of a fitness apparatus. I don't know what that means, but apparently Wendy Holner had two bad wrists, but she went out there. She charged. She looked good. She was smooth. She's strong. She's back. All the way back. It's totally awesome. Lena Door. I am so pumped on this one because I do feel like I called it. Landed Door came down the finish line, 0.66 ahead. She ripped the bottom. I want to talk about the bottom in detail from here on out. Now, I've got it fully diagrammed out. Start house is up here, top flat's up here. This is split number two as we come over the rollover, left foot, and then we get into the right footed delight. Now, it was really tricky here to watch on Peacock because the camera was switching halfway through the delay here. And so as you got the upper camera, you come through here, they'd go into the delay, it'd switch cameras, and you'd see them hit a right-footed gate, and then you'd see them hit another right-footed gate from another angle, and then boom, they're rolling over on the pitch here. And so it was really quick, and it was, I had to fast forward and rewind to figure out this is a delay right here that they came over. Okay, do the delay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 rhythm gates down that top pitch right there. Uh, hairpin, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 open gates until they hit the flush on the flat, and then one, two, three, four gates to the finish line. Okay, so now we got it. Split number two is the gate before the delay coming over the rollover. Split number three was one, two, three, four, five, six gates after the hairpin coming off of the pitch. Still fairly steep right here, but the main part of the pitch is certainly up here. So, Lena Door, where did she get it done? A lot of talk was made about the gate on the rollover. Not everybody made a clean turn on the rollover. Lena Door did decent on the rollover. Where Lena Door got it done is she started ripping somewhere around in here, about five gates above the hairpin on the pitch. She started ripping and she started edging the ski into the fall line. Quick edge sets and pressures. She was up tempo and she was above the gate all the way and just ripped all this. She was pushing hard and was fast from all the way up here, all the way to the finish line. That's where Lana Dura got it done um, with some really special skiing. I encourage everybody to go back, watch her run again. Fantastic. Katrina Leansberger was next. She was silky smooth on the top flat, just classic Leansberger, but then down the pitch just made mistakes, not typical mistakes. That was the thing about her last year, she never made a mistake. She was just rock solid every run. She gets the most out of her skiing with the least amount of movement of anyone I know in the World Cup. She just kind of flies down and everything's efficient, good, the hands are a little high, but it's smooth, it's fast. It was that on the top flat, she didn't have it on the pitch. She ended up in sixth place on the day. Still a good result for her. Michelle Gissine was just too long on her edges. Now, Gissine might have the closest it is to an A-frame and maybe even a ski deviation as there is out there on the World Cup. Um, and she's okay with that. She can be fast with that if she gets clean edge sets and rides a ski across the hill super clean every time. However, 
So you're just too long uh, on the edges, still sliding the ski too far below the fall line, and just didn't have a total A game on the second run. They talked about some uh, sit, some health situation she has where she doesn't have energy on the second run. It looked to be like that was the case today. Anna Sven Larsen was up next. She came down into second place. She looked good. She, Sven Larsen, made a great move right here on the rollover. She came through the delay, did a really good job, buttered the tails here on the rollover, and went one, two, three, with really good skiing there. And and then she maintained that good skiing, and then she just kept that same skiing, kept that same skiing, kept that same skiing, and then made it to the finish. Sven Larsen never dialed it up in here. She never got to, she never picked her tempo back up and started to, uh, started to hammer again, where Lena Dorr made the same good move over here. Maybe not as good a move on the rollover as Sven Larsen, but here Lena Dorr picked it up, and Sven Larsen just maintained this intensity down through the finish. Sven Larsen ended up fifth on the day. Psyched to see her back on the circuit. She's awesome. She's going to be another total threat out there the rest of the season. Shlokar. <clears throat> she came down into second place. Here's a girl who is a relative unknown on the World Cup circuit and came through that finish line like she was mad that she wasn't in first place. No one out there intimidates her. She wants a podium and she's going to get it. I like this girl. She ended up fourth. Then came Michaela Schifrin. All right, Michaela, we've all seen it now, and if you haven't, we've got to go out and watch it. Michaela comes over onto the roll, and she made a good move here on the rollover gate, but then she just wasn't quite on her skis quite right. She was behind the course through here, low pressure under here, low pressure under here, and then here it is, the fifth gate into the pitch. This is where she makes that weird move where she like steps up off the ski, and they got it going again. And from here to the bottom, she ripped. And she was totally sick, and that was vintage Michaela. But she didn't have a good section just in these five gates right here, and that's what really cost her at the end of the day. Lena Dorr beat Michaela Schiffer straight up in this run. I think it's fantastic. Um, I mean, I'm sorry for Michaela. Obviously, I'm rooting for her. But then came Petra Bohova. Now, Petra, just a dynamite run. I thought after Michaela's run that... Michaela had charged the top enough. I wasn't sure about the pitch, where it was going to be. And then Petra goes, and Michaela made up three hundredths on Petra across the top flat. And I was like, all right, this is good. Now Michaela just is going to keep on going the rest of the way down. However, Petra came over this rollover, did not make a mistake, and absolutely charged it, maintained that good, quick, high edge pressure, boom, all the way through here, all the way to the bottom. She won the whole run. Petra was just outstanding out there. And then... Uh, Petra, in the in the interview at the end, named her reindeer Mikhail, who is now the love of her life. Love this stuff. Um, let's flip it back around here. Let's talk about this high edge pressure. Let's talk about all this. As the pitch increases, the need for a stivet becomes more and more. And the degree of which you are going to execute the stivet varies on how much the pitch is. But for this example, we're just going to picture that the girls are on the pitch at Levy, the in between the breakover and the first hairpin on the pitch. So the pitch at Levy, this is what we're looking at. When somebody is above it or skiing well, it's going to look like this, where the tails start feathering somewhere out in here. You get a little tail feather coming in. Tails feather, and then the pressure, the connection with the snow happens somewhere here in the fall line where the ski is bending. The ski is bending up in here, but this is where it connects to the snow and boom, and then it arcs out. Okay, this is a good, proper ski line. If somebody comes through with low pressure, then more than likely, if everything's equal, if the exit of the old one was the same, more than likely they come in and they start carving the ski here and do their feather later. And now you have here and then the feathers here, and then the connection with the snow happens down in here, and then they ride out, go clean. So a later initiation here with the feather, and then a later connection to the snow, again the skis bending and then clean coming out, but you see that the direction on the blue 
has already achieved at the gate. The skis have connected to the snow and they're starting to go that way towards the next gate when they're going by the gate. Below the gate or skiing below the course is when the pressure and the connection is happening below the gate here and this is just slow. It's faster to have your little bit of sliding, feathering, stiviting above the gate connect early. This is early edge pressure. I don't want to be confused with this early edge pressure. That's a roll up. It's different. Rolling up clean is its own thing. When you're feathering out like this, you're feathering out like this, and edge pressure right here is early edge pressure. There's pressure on the ski through here, but you're still sliding it, you're kind of floating it, and getting it here is early edge pressure, and this is late edge pressure. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps explain what I'm talking about when I'm talking about it. I think it's important to be on the same page with this stuff. I think it's really important to start talking about sliding and what the slides look like, how big they are, where they are, when to use them, when it's appropriate, and then we can get more kids skiing above the gate, more kids winning races. That is my wrap up on the second run itself. Again, Petra Vahova, she's your winner. She was the best both runs. She is just skiing fantastic. She looked great out there. Michaela Schifrin is still great. Did not have her A game out there to fully win a World Cup. And then Lena Dorr of Germany on the podium with some really special skiing. I hope she can keep that going and move it into the rest of the season. There were some other Americans and Canadians out there today. AJ Hurt, uh, let's just go through them. AJ Hurt, Amelia Smart, AJ Hurt of the US, Amelia Smart of Canada, Nino O'Brien of the US, Lila Lapani of the US, Ronnie Remy of Canada. Basically, all those girls were below it, or their pressures were below the gate. Um, maybe they were trying to get early edge pressures up in here, and they were having to just hold on and weren't getting a clean grip to it till later. Um, I don't know, but once you're behind it, it's hard to get back in front of it. And that's something that Michaela did that was so amazing out there today. Michaela was starting to get behind it. She was behind it here. And in one gate, she just bumped, stood herself up, got back online, went with her ankles and knees, windshield wiper them out into the fall line, found that good early edge pressure at the gate, and boom, ripped the rest of it. She made a recovery. She realized she was in trouble, and in one gate, she switched it and got back to her line. Sure, for five gates she was out of sorts, but in one gate she switched it back to being online. Our girls, the American girls and the Canadian girls in our making the second run, they are holding on to that late edge pressure the whole way down the pitch and not making the adjustment in one gate, which is all the time you get to make the adjustment, um, and something they gotta work on in the future. It really looked like all of our girls were fast on the top flat and good on the bottom flat, and they are just missing it on the pitch and I hope that they can start maybe trying harder to slide better. That way they can have clean completions and then make second runs and then start to tighten up their line and be more aggressive on the pitch once they've made the second run. That'd be my thoughts. I don't know. It was a fantastic race out there. I'm really glad I woke up early and watched it and I hope all of you are finding some value in this. Sorry I'm not as clean and polished as some of the ESPN guys. But I'm trying, I'm learning, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Please leave comments below, like, subscribe, share me on Reddit. As always, keep shredding. Alright, let's rip this bad boy coming across the flat. Boot top! Hard, strong, big, stiff, coming in floaty, boom, on the pitch. Now it's hard dog time around this one, staying above it. Yeah, coming from behind, outside in, boom, facing the next gate. Boom, still shredding, still on the pitch. Still above, oh, I got a late there, I got a late there, gotta get it back, bam, right there. Oh yeah, quick edge set right there. Another quick edge set, now I'm gonna let it go a little bit to go to speed. Hairpin, it's a shuffle, I'm over. Oh, a couple swingers. It wasn't done. You had to swing right here. Swinging, swinging, swinging. Wondering how far ahead I am. Still swinging. Still swinging. Starting to flatten out. Looking at the finish line. 
Oh, go, here comes the flush. Quick move through the flush. I'm charging. Now that last roll is super fun. Boot up, boot up, boot up. Finish line. 